Blue Drive to basically capture our overall corporate initiatives to reduce the effect of carbon on uh, personal mobility. So it's all about our vehicles themselves that we'll talk about today. It's about our manufacturing and procurement. It's about this building here today where there's been a tremendous commitment by our company to minimize our company's uh, carbon effect in terms of our activity. So uh, in terms of today, we're going to talk about our vehicle lineup and, and how Blue Drive has been uh, a key component of reducing the carbon footprint of our vehicles that we uh, produce and sell. So a little uh, comment about our fuel cell. We've been selling that now for about a year. Uh, we've sold about 70 of them. And of course, everybody asks, well, why 70? And it's basically tied to the number of fuel stations that are available. So uh, we were the first to actually pass over ownership of the vehicle. We, it's not a test program. Customers put their money on the table, and, and they lease the car from us, and it's their car. Uh, we've been doing it, I think, since the early part of June of last year. Uh, the customers that we've uh, sold the vehicle to or leased the vehicle to are ones that live close to a fuel station. Uh, right now, there's less than 10 in the state of California. Uh, by the end of this calendar, there should be in the mid-20s. Uh, and then, of course, uh, under Governor Jerry Brown's uh, uh, to develop $200 million towards construction, I believe about 100 stations through the end of uh, the next couple of years. So uh, as those stations get built out, we're taking more and more uh, applications for uh, uh, vehicle sales. And of course, the customers go to our website, and they uh, show interest in the vehicle. And then we uh, then contact them and make sure that the vehicle is going to be operated uh, nearby those stations that are available, whether they commute towards a station or they live towards a or near a station. We just want to make sure there's a satisfying experience of ownership. Uh, and that's the most important thing, uh, to make sure that uh, their ownership experience matches what they've experienced with the gasoline car. Uh, just a couple words about the car. It goes about 265 miles on our refuel. The refueling time is about the same as gasoline, about five minutes, maybe a couple minutes more. So it's about the same time as a gasoline refueling event. Uh, the car basically is completely transparent in terms of how it drives. It starts like a regular car, drives like a regular car. Uh, it does everything a regular car does, except it only makes water as an emission. Uh, so that's the good news with the car. And of course, you can make hydrogen from a number of different ways, many of them and be zero carbon. So the issue of hydrogen is not so much how to make it, it's which, uh, which method will be the, the lowest cost and most scalable in terms of large volume. Uh, there's an activity going on across the street to build a, it's called a charge end station. And that station will use human waste to uh, turn into uh, hydrogen. It will also power about 80% of that, of the Orange County sanitation plant's electrical needs. And it also provides heat. So those are the three things it provides fuel for cars, it provides heat for the conversion of the waste, uh, human waste into uh, benign material, and it provides up to 80% of the electrical requirements for that sanitation plant across the street. So there's many things that you can do when you produce hydrogen that are very neutral to the environment, if not beneficial to the environment. In this case, it's like finding money on the ground. So all of that vent gas out of the sanitation station is going to go in the atmosphere one way or another. In this case, we're recapturing it turn it into motor fuel and electrical energy to run the plant. So it's uh, just a win-win for everybody. And there's a lot of other ways to make hydrogen that are also equally supportive for uh, carbon reduction and, uh, and personal mobility. Let's talk about our overall uh, activity in terms of carbon in our vehicles. So uh, we're the lowest CO2 emitting automaker among mass market manufacturers right now. And this is according to uh, uh, federal EPA uh, um, information, you can go to the website and see it. So we're at 236 grams per mile, uh, substantially below our nearest competitor, and substantially below uh, some of the higher emitter manufacturers. And in terms of overall compliance, uh, we're do also doing the best. We're 27 grams per mile over complying compared to other manufacturers. And that's with a pretty full lineup. Uh, when you look at other competitors here, uh, you can see that uh, you know, we're doing quite well.